recording. All right, welcome everybody. Welcome to the three secrets to grow a successful online business. I know, like it's a very snazzy title, right? Oh my gosh, I am so excited to be with you. Everyone on, I know, is growing an online business. If you're watching on the replay, hello. We are so glad you're watching on the replay. And um, in the next, okay, in the next 25 minutes, we're going to try to do this 25 minutes, James and I. I know, we have so much info, but my friend James and I are going to share with you what we believe are the three kind of pillars, things to look for, things to consider, things to think about if you're considering growing or you know, building a successful business online. And let me just give you a couple fun facts before we begin. And then I'm going to introduce James and then we're going to start. Okay. Did you know, did you know that 63% of Americans, and I know we have international businesses, but I know about the United States, 63% of Americans say they would like to grow a business online. Did you know? Coincidence, same number, 63% of humans on the globe are on the internets. Uh-huh. That's like four and a half billion people. Okay. You don't need four and a half billion people to, to buy from you. Just a handful of them and you'll be fine. Okay. Um, did you know that when you poll people after the pandemic, uh, Darren Hardy speaks to this. Darren Hardy is the past publisher of Success Magazine. And he says, because of the pandemic and everyone jumping online and learning new digital stuff that they never knew how to do before because they were forced to do it, they now want high tech with a personal touch. And they not only want high tech, they kind of want it to run close to perfect. So the bar is really, really high. So people that never were on digital and now are, they expect that companies and business owners, they expect their tech to work. They expect that they that people know what they're doing. They, they're not as forgiving as they used to be, which is fascinating. Also, of course, we know people more than ever are saying because they had a first, you know, homecoming to themselves of really exploring their life of, I don't like my job or I don't like my boss or I want to stay home. I liked it there. And so you know, the mass, the mass resignation has happened as well. So that's kind of the culture that James and I want to speak to. And let me introduce James because he's new to you guys. And I met James on a Zoom. Um, he was the marketing and sales expert in a past business I was building. And I always joke, whatever came out of his mouth, I was like, just do what James does. He is brilliant. And you are one of the smartest marketing minds that I've ever met. And so Listen to this. James has been involved with online marketing for 15 plus years. I've been 10. So together we got 25 years. You've owned several successful businesses. You've helped several companies launch million dollar brands. I'm next, James. You're going to help me launch my million dollar brand. You've owned a seven figure branding agency and consulted with top level executives on every aspect of marketing. You have grown teams to over 40,000 people and earned over seven figures in the home-based business industry. You live in Dallas with your beautiful partner of all things, Angel, totally appropriately named, and you love golf. So you and Garth have that in common. And before entering the online world of marketing, he was a professional dog trainer for the US canine. So I know humans are harder to train than dogs, but you're here for it, okay? And last, his favorite sayings are these two. I love this. If you don't ask, the answer is always no. Love that. And if you don't go, you'll never know. Welcome, James Leonhart. Oh, that's I'm gonna, can I wake up today every morning? Because that'd be a great way to wake up. I will record it for you. Absolutely. You're a superhero. Okay. Perfect. You and I, we racked our brains together last week. And we were like, this is what I think are the three pillars. And you're like, this is what I think. And we came together and we had the similar answers. And we have give, we're going to give you three things to think about, okay? So we're going to do this in like 20 minutes now. We got seven minutes for each pillar. The first one is when you're looking at what the heck, what the heck, what the heck, what do I sell? How do I do this? The first thing we thought of is tech. 
Huge. It's got to have good tech behind it. Speak to us, James, about tech. Well, I think the biggest thing, like you mentioned, you know, people are unforgiving in technology now. Like a couple, a couple of years ago, if your website didn't load fast enough or, you know, there was glitches, okay, I get it. Maybe it's a new website. I can go launch a multi-million dollar company on Wix.com. And so if I go to your website and it doesn't load or there's nine clicks to check out or it's hard to log into my account or, you know, things aren't in the right language, it's totally unforgivable. And it's the easiest way to lose a customer for life. Because once somebody leaves for tech, they're never going to come back and be like, oh, I'm going to give you one more shot on your website. It's very hard to win back from a, a tech reason of it not. You can actually win people back easier if your product doesn't work or you know customer service things. You can win that back because you can replace the product. You can replace customer support. Uh, people, for some reason, like you said, because our worlds are so online now, they don't forgive tech because it's so available now. It's not something that costs, you know, $10,000 to make a website. It used to. Now you can watch a really nice website, $1,000, $2,000, something like that. There's really no excuse in the book for you to not have good technology. And then I'll, I'll kick it back to you after this next point. You have to own it because in a home-based business or online marketing or anything, there are so many third parties out there, I mean, a lot of great third parties, you have know, ClickFunnels and, and AWeber and so many different things you can use to plug into from a third party thing. The challenge with that is that you're, you're at the mercy of the third party. You're at the mercy of the third party going down. You're at the mercy of the third party. You wanting to change things or whatever it is. They don't own a piece of your company. You're paying them as a third party person. And so you need to have something you own so no matter what happens, you can be malleable to it. And we talk about this a lot with our clients and everything, where, you know, if you're on social media, you don't own that list. The only list you own is your contact list, the one you own that you have access to that if the internet went down, it's yours. And so if you're going to align with a company online, you have to make sure not that just the tech is perfect, but they also own it. And does it have to be perfect in every way? No, but it has to work in every perfect way, if that makes any sense. So if, if it doesn't have all the bells and whistles, you can build that up over time, but it has to work with what it does now. So that's why I would say, you know, companies that are going to market online, whatever you're offering or selling or doing, those are the kind of the points that I look for in a company uh, if I'm going to align with them in any way, shape or form. Absolutely. So let's talk funnels. Funnels, yeah. we're not talking about the thing you put your oil in your car in. Okay, so a funnel is something you've all experienced, whether you know it or not. A marketing funnel is where you exchange your email for some piece of valuable information or content or something or a link or, an, or a discount for the business. When someone joins your funnel, you then have them on your email list. I was thinking about this this morning. It's so much it's a whole different game to get a one and done customer. That is not what you want for the rest of your life in business. You don't want to try to, for the rest of your life, find new customers. No, you want repeat customers. You want customers for life. You want, like Tony Robbins says, raving fans. You don't want a one-time customer. Well, how are you going to communicate to all those people if they're not on your email list or you don't have a way to communicate. So I love what we have found. It, it drips value on them. It, it's like, get your foot in the store, get your foot in the door, take a look around the store, right, James? Can you speak to like the retention? You wanna be thinking about retention and, and what's called the, um, what's it called, James? The lifetime... Well, you, you're looking at the lifetime, you know, value of a customer or a client, because, you know, I'd rather have somebody do all their research and be negative and say no for like six months and then go, you know what? Yes, because they made that decision on their own and they're a customer for life. The person that makes a decision really fast, while it's good and you want that, that initial thing, some people make decisions very fast. Most people don't. And so when you get people on a list, you want them to never get off the list. Because when I was 
doing my branding agency and we did a lot of email marketing. We still have clients today that have 200,000 people on a list, a million people on a list. The goal of those lists is not to sell to the list. The goal of every communication is not for is for the person not to click unsubscribe. Wow. And that's how you grow your following. And so instead of going, okay, what should I sell to my list today? It's what value can I give to my list? I, I wrote it down. Here's how you get a lifetime customer. You emotionally involve them. You, they have a relationship with your brand, your company, you, if you're the coach, whatever, whatever that relationship is, it's not transactional. If you look at like the real estate market, the real estate market has started going from relational to transactional where you know, it used to be like you'd have one real estate agent and that'd be the real estate agent for life or whatever it is. Now it's transactional. It's where can I get the best price? I can do it all online, Zillow, all this stuff. Not that it's there yet. I think the car industry is going there next. I think that relational car transaction is now going online. So you look at in the future, let's look five years, 10 years down the road. If you want the customer you have today to be buying from you every month or every whenever you want them to buy from you, it really comes down to you need to get them emotionally involved with your brand. And how you do that is with time. You know, most people, most, not everybody, but most people get in a relationship, they court for a while, you know, then they maybe get married, then they have kids. It doesn't happen on day one. And I think in our society, they're like, oh, I just met Dr. Aaron. So we should marry and have kids and, and be 50 years old tomorrow. Well, no, you can't be 50 in a, in a year. So it doesn't make any sense. But that's how most people think. They want it all to happen right now. Whereas people that think wealth think timelines. You know, they don't think in events. They think, how am I going to do this over the next 10 years? And that's why you need a funnel that brings people in and go, hey, listen, I can offer you value. And that value exchanges their contact information. I this is a weird. This is gonna be weird to to say. Uh, I almost see it as like someone giving me their soul. Like that's how serious I think of contact information. And then I have to treat that contact information as if someone said, "Here's my soul. Take care of it." I'm like, okay, that's a that's a that's a hefty responsibility. And so now I'm gonna feed the soul. I'm gonna give it what it wants, and it's gonna be value rich and all that kind of stuff until that person goes, "Okay, you know what? I've got enough value." I'm going to place an order. I'm going to work with Dr. Aaron. We're going to do that coaching program. That's what you're looking for in your in your funnel transaction of getting people to to want to be in a relationship with you. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. Thank you James for that. You know, I always like to go to the best in the field and and see what they're doing and I was following Marie Forleo who has the number one online launch um, on the internet. She does one thing kind of every year. It's called B-School and she does millions of dollars. And I was at an event and the interviewer said, what's your secret? And she goes, I've been doing this for 18 years. For 18 years, I've been in your email. I just don't go away. So what you're saying is so true. Okay. Before we move on, <clears throat> The, the business we're building, the affiliate business we're building, you get all of your marketing funnels for free, yep. free. You get free or free. Let's go free. You get free. You get a free account. You get free marketing funnels. Okay. I have spent, mm, oh, Garth, Garth, would, Garth knows this. He's not here. It's okay. <laughs> we, we, didn't get a, we didn't get a new kitchen table for many years because of the, the money I've spent on marketing funnels because they work and they were important and they were incredible. And it, helped me build a six figure business from the gate, but they cost thousands of dollars to make funnels. And then to have someone continue to make your funnels and you don't want to be working on your funnels all day long. You that's, that's what James has been paid lots of money to do on a full-time basis. Right, James? Like you, we, you, we I, I, I have clients that would spend hundreds of thousands of dollars a month on funnels, ads, all that crazy stuff. And, and it's needed because if you're you know, yeah. running a multi-million dollar a month business, you're going to spend hundreds of thousands of dollars and, and with all the infrastructure. And that's huge. And what we look for, and so when Dr. Aaron or myself or people that are kind of in our circle, look for where do we want to align with? It's got to meet these criteria. It's got to have the tech. It's got to have all these different things. And it has to be free because I can't expect someone to go, okay, now that you're in, you know, pay 30 bucks a month pay $100 a year or whatever it is, because again, that's going to, that creates a reason for someone to stop. Oh my oh, gosh. Well, I don't want to pay the 30 bucks. Yeah, I don't want to pay the 100 bucks. 
Yeah. This is a perfect segue into our sex, second pillar. The second pillar, I didn't mean to interrupt you. I got, yeah, you're I good. Just got so excited. Okay. <laughs> the second pillar kind of has to do with products. How do you choose your products? But I want to talk about the second pillar more is how are these products going from the business to the consumer? And so we're going to talk about that pillar in the context of products and Really, what you just said, James, is you want an Amazon model. Yeah. You Okay. So typical network marketing versus affiliate marketing. What James and I are sharing with the world is affiliate marketing. Okay. And it's different than typical network marketing. And James, you're the best one that can describe this. Can you tee this up? Tee this up like... We kind of say network marketing is dead and affiliate marketing is in. And, and let me just actually say, we used to be with a company that sold clean products. It was, it was, they were the first ones to the marketplace that didn't have things like, you know, gasoline in the products for the skincare and petroleum. And, you know, it didn't have parabens and all these things. And I remember when we walked into the grocery store and Gillette came out with a clean shaving cream and Garth looked at me and he goes, our business is, is going to tank because if I can find the same product at my grocery store for $3 and you're asking $32 for yours. And it became this very clear message to me that this whole, my protein shake is better than your protein shake was not going to fly anymore. And so I think that will help tee up like the whole even network marketing versus affiliate marketing and, and how you see it, James. Yeah, I think it's huge because, you know, I've been in the, I've been operating online mainly for about 15 years, but I've been in the home-based network marketing direct sales industry for like 22 years. Uh, the first company I was with was when I was with a wee, a wee one and I entered a, a summer ad in a newspaper for Cutco Cutlery. Uh, and I did Cutco Cutlery for a summer and called up all my friends' moms. I was like, hey, I'm getting a scholarship. So I've been around this for a long time. Didn't even know what it was back then. I just knew I was making 15 bucks an hour uh, and I got some free knives and stuff like that. Uh, and so I've been around this a long time. And the, the evolution of that industry for a lot of companies and just in general has stopped. Like the, it hasn't continued to evolve because some companies, just like every industry, they get really big and it's hard to move. It's like a really big cruise liner. It's hard to avert the, the uh, overcoming iceberg that's coming its way. And it's really hard to move. And so back in the day, and it still is a lot of areas where you had this choice and it was what I would call a linear choice or a vertical choice. I think it's more of a vertical choice where it's like, okay, uh, Dr. Aaron, you like this product that I have, right? Great. Do you want to get involved as a distributor or as a customer? And usually the difference was price. So like if Dr. Aaron became a distributor, she would get it for 10 bucks. And if she was a retail person, she'd get it for 20 bucks. Well, where do you think that other $10 goes? Because it doesn't go to the company. It goes to pay the person for selling the product. And that's the old model of distributor where I, I buy a product and I distribute the product. Anybody remember Amway back in the day? Uh, people, you would have, you know, garage fulls of stuff and they would have people come over and buy their stuff. Even companies like Mary Kay, and there's still companies out there that do that where, you know, they come in to buy something and they go out and that's that retail model. And what you need here, like you said, if there's a price differential uh, in a company, 20 and $10, the thing is, is eventually there will be a product in Target that's around the $10 mark mm. because that $10 mark now goes, wait a minute, because that's the true retail value shelf value, we would call it, because the company, the corporation makes their revenue and their profit off the $10, not the $20. And so eventually other multi-billion dollars, that's what, how, you know, there's a company out there that was called Mona V that, you know, created the Noni Berry. You know, now we have, you know, berries and everything. And acai, they, they created that. Acai is in like shampoo now, uh, but it wasn't. And it became popular because a, a, a direct sales company said, wow, look at this product that's selling so much. And big business went, well, duh, let's get on that. And we have distribution and we can drive the price down. And so that price for that drink they were selling wasn't of a retail value. And the only people buying it were distributors, hence turned into 
internal consumption, which is illegal. And so your product, that's the first and easiest way to recognize a company for what it really is, is, is there a price differential between me as a retail customer or as a distributor? What we do, there is no difference. Somebody comes in and they want to buy a product as a customer or as an affiliate, not a distributor, because we don't distribute products. I share affiliate links. And so when we do that, there's no price differential. So somebody doesn't come in, like Wendy doesn't come in and go, okay, so I'm going to jump on the distributor bandwagon because I want a better price. The only reason that Wendy is going to do distributor side, the affiliate side, is if she actually wants to share and make money because she doesn't get any other benefit for being an affiliate. And so that protects the pricing structure. And so that's what Amazon is. You don't go on Amazon and go, oh, look, there's batteries here for $10 or batteries for $5. They're, they're all kind of around five bucks. Just depends on where you get it and who you're buying it from. So that's a big thing when it comes down to it. We could probably go on for that for a while. Oh, no, I know. That's the biggest. That was so, so great. Thank you for explaining that that way. Um you know, on this second pillar of products, I remember years ago, I was at my mentor's live event, Brendan Burchard. He's the world's number one high performance coach. And I was sitting in the seat and I was like, wouldn't it be cool if we could just have a high performance mall and Brend Brendan could just pick all the best products in the world and just put them on his high performance website. And I always just thought it would be so snazzy. And it was almost kind of before this model of affiliate marketing in some ways, but I just thought it was cool. Yeah. And then, and then it was created and that's what we're here with. And so let's talk about the benefit of being able to sell or be an affiliate for a bunch of different high performing brands that seemingly might not make sense. So we might sell a skin lotion and a gas fuel additive. We might sell the world's greatest travel platform and a CBD you know, tincture for your dog, okay? None of this seemingly goes together other than it's the best of those product lines. You've got, we've got 10 brands and more come every three to six months, we, we, we have a new brand. Each brand alone, imagine this, is like a billion dollar brand by themselves. Yeah. So this is what happened this morning. And then I want you to add to this. So I work out every um, week with this friend of mine named Morgan. And Morgan wanted a new protein shake. I said, oh my God, my protein shake is so yummy. It has only eight ingredients. She goes, send me the link. I pre-populated a cart because we have the tech that makes that so easy. I'm like, I put it into her cart. I sent her a free link to go and get the protein. And this morning at the gym, she goes, yeah, no, I, I saw that link was awesome, but I, I was taking a look around. I'm like, what do you all have here? And she's shopping for all the things. And I sent her there for a protein shake. And guess what? If Morgan didn't want protein shakes, I wouldn't have been able to sell her a protein shake. You know, I've been in a health and wellness company. If people don't value their health, you're out of luck. You're like, okay, I got nothing for you. If you're in a beauty, you know, industry and you're selling makeup and people are like, um, I don't wear makeup. Ah, oh, shoot. Oh, you know, it's like, um, if you don't travel and you've got a travel company, you're not, you know, I got nothing for you. So there's so much flexibility there, but I would love your thoughts on, we have 10 brands, 10 yeah, high performing I, brands. I think the biggest thing is the, is the, the ability to pivot. And like in this day and age, it's so interesting in this home-based business world where, you know, people will come into the pistachio company. And they'll go, I'm now a pistachio expert and everyone's going to learn about my pistachios. And they're like, you, weren't you just eating a burger like yesterday? And they're all, they're all, oh my gosh, the pistachios are amazing. Buy my pistachios. And their whole Facebook page looks like this. I'm not selling pistachios, but that's what happens is that people come in and they go, now I have to master this brand, whether it's skincare or wellness. And Hey, I'm, 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 a, I'm no saint. I've done that. I've too. come into companies and I'm like, oh my gosh, look at this thing on my arm and all this stuff. And the thing about it is that it's great for a little while, but eventually it'll die down because you can't pivot out of that. And that's what happens with a lot of companies. They'll go, XYZ company is a wellness company. And then after a while, wellness won't be enough. So the XYZ will come out with skincare. And after a while, skincare won't be enough. So XYZ will come out with collagen. And, X and, and all of a sudden, XYZ has all these crazy products. And you're like, why do you guys sell beef jerky and shakes? I don't get that. Uh, and so 
when you have a brand like this, because the way that the brand started was we are going to be a high performance mall. We're going to be known for whatever you do during the day. We want you to be our daily choice, whatever that is. I don't care if it's what you put in your car, what you put in your face, what you put in your body. I don't care what it is. And that's the whole idea is making it where you can pivot. And so, especially in this like affiliate influencer world, yes. you know, it's so normal for you to get on someone's stories. Like Angel's always on people's stories. She you know, has a couple women she follows for like fashion and stuff like that. They're promoting like 19 different things from like 19 different companies and it's normal. And so in this day and age, it's normal to come on and go, oh man, these are my, my favorite pistachios. And oh my gosh, this is amazing. I love this phone and this pencil is so good. And everyone's like, oh, cool. I don't care about any of that. What's the watch you were wearing? <laughs> Oh, well, the watch too. I can send you a link for that. And so that's the whole idea here is that, you know, you don't have to be an influence with a th a tens of thousands of people on Facebook. You just have to promote in a way that like we just talked about, doesn't get people to get off your list where you're talking like real people all the time, not buy my pistachios. It's I use this and I love this and I love this and I love this. And it makes it where it's a real conversation versus in what art in the industry we call it and versus clickbait versus me trying to convince you that you don't, even though you don't like pistachios, you should buy them from me because you're my friend. Ooh, okay. that's just, awesome. just like, just have that land in your brains, everybody. That's the model we're kind of moving away from. Yeah. And the reason why that model isn't super fun is because really then you're having to sell to your friends and family. You're like, I want to try to uh, convince you why this thing is the best. Well, it's just so phenomenally like a game changer. So that was so well put. Well, it allows uh, you to go to your the cold market, right? The cold market used to be like, so, oh my gosh, the cold market. Now it's like, no, you know, we have TikTok, Reels, Facebook Stories, YouTube, so many ways to bring it, bring people to you if you do it like how, you know, we, I was, uh, somebody said that they saw somebody at a, it was either a high school game or a football game or something like that. And they wanted to know who that girl was at the football game. And then that girl went from having like a thousand followers to like 2 million followers now. And it's, that's the day and age that we live in where people can, you can explode overnight if you have the presence online and you show up. And so it's not about, you know, how many followers do I have now? It's what are you doing to get more people into your world? So they go, what's Dr. Aaron doing? You know, what's Wendy doing? What, what are they doing over here? And it might take that person a day to make a decision. It might take them six months, but that's okay. Cause you're in the, the, the mode of building a list, not selling pistachios. And that's the biggest, the biggest lesson that we've learned. And now we need a company that we can align with where we have lots of things to offer, nothing to sell. Oh, and my that, that's the biggest lesson. So good. Okay. We got seven minutes. We're going to go seven more minutes. We got it. Our last okay. pillar. When James and I were talking about this last pillar, it was like, what, what is this? And then I realized it was a mastermind. What do mm -hmm. I mean? What is a mastermind? In, when you grow a business. Any business owner I've ever interviewed or any of the greats all answer this question the same. What is your secret to success? They all say, I hung around and I surrounded myself with other people who also wanted success. Okay, so of course we know we need to surround ourselves that want with other people that want the same thing. But in this business venture that we're in, we have chosen this for a reason. It's the people that are building it, the way they think about business. They are business titans. Um, one of our top mentors is the number one affiliate earner in the world. She makes over a million a month. I think I'll listen to what she has to say. And then she's married to her husband and they own the company. And he is the leading brand, the leading brain of technology for affiliate marketing. He has people flying in, CEOs from a lot of big companies flying in saying, what the heck are you doing? Like, can, can we, right, James? Like, will you, can, will you acquire our bit, our company? Like they are so light years behind in their tech. Okay. Combine that. Plus you don't want to go and do this online gig alone. 
Okay. You do not. I have paid again. It's been so useful and is the secret to my success to be in masterminds. I am always in mentorship with someone and paying for that. So we'll get to the fact that that's all free here too. But um, tell us what your thoughts are on the power of who you mastermind with and what we have here. Yeah, I think mastermind, you could do an equal sign to that and say culture. Because, you know, mastermind is also, you know, in the home-based business world, it could be like, who did you enroll with? You know, who's their support team and all that kind of stuff. But it really comes down to the culture of the entire company. Uh, and a lot of uh, previous ones I've been affiliated with, it's kind of like no one wants to share anything because everyone in the company is kind of like a competitor of each because we're all kind of fighting for the same customers and everything. And with the culture that they've developed here at this company over the last eight years, you know, has been one of a one for all attitude. So if somebody does an awesome training, they give it to everybody. They have this, again, back to tech, they have this live stream technology. There's actually something going on tonight where people can get on a live stream and watch the best of the best of the best. And when they're watching that, that webinar, it's attached to you. So as that person's talking and they're like, hey, you should sign up. And they go, oh, cool, I want to. And they click on the sign up link. The experts doing the presentation, they sign up with you. And now they're they're in your network. They're one of your affiliates, one of your customers. And somebody did all the heavy lifting for you. And then that's also on recording. And you can replay that over and over and over again. So it always kind of comes back to the tech and the culture because the culture of what you're doing is really one of the biggest reasons I've walked away from multiple six-figure incomes. Me too. So I'll be, yep. I'll be sitting in a room and I'll be like, that is not in alignment with my beliefs, my values, whatever it is. And they could be like, so they couldn't come to me and say, well, we'll double your salary. That's not how this works. This is completely voluntary. You get to decide who you align with and, and who we're aligned with in the company and overall, everyone wants everyone to do better because a lot of the ways to earn income in this plan that we have is based on everyone doing real well. You know, there are there's some shares you can actually earn yeah. in the company from day one that is contingent on the total revenue of the company from day one, not you earn your way into day one. Wendy, you go, you go sign up four people this month as a customer or an affiliate. You've got a share of the entire revenue of the company. So we want the revenue of the company to go up. So we want everyone to help. So mastermind and culture are so synonymous with each other, but the the immediate mastermind is your support team, making sure they have the structure, they have the systems, the programs. We just launched a program today with Dr. Aaron, you know, launching these programs that make it so like, Wendy, you don't have to be a health coach. Wendy, you don't need to be an online trader. Wendy, you don't have to do this. All Wendy has to do is go, hey guys, this is pretty cool. Come check it out. The same way you would go, hey, you guys should go see Avatar. Mm -hmm. I, I still haven't seen it yet. I don't know if it's good or bad. So, you know, but it's not about like, oh my gosh, go see Avatar because of this and that and that. It's like, I like the movie, go see it. Whatever it is, that's the, the idea that we always talk about in home-based business, but everyone ends up turning into pistachio experts. Yes. You know, and that's kind of right. what this is about. So culture is huge. Mastermind is huge. And our next, our final topic will be pretty huge too, I think. So tee up, we just hired. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. That's the what world's You just you teed me up. We hired the world's top trainer in yep. this industry. Um, I'm just going to be super honest with you all. I've been the one that's had to, in past companies, do that coaching. Yeah. Because not everyone knows how to do business coaching and mindset coaching and personal development coaching and professional development coaching. Fine. But um, I don't have to do that anymore. I, I do, you know, as, as when it's fun and, it, and, and my team is, you know, asking me for it. But tell, tell them about Mark. Yeah, I think what you said in the beginning, too, you said, you know, people want tech and high touch, right? And mm -hmm. so this company has really mastered the tech. And now they've hired a gentleman by the name of Mark Asetta, uh, who has been in the industry for about 30 plus years, has done events like to 30,000 people in a venue. And, and the reason he came on board was really to pour foundational principles into everybody, no matter who you signed up with, no matter when you join, no matter what it is, it levels the playing field. Because one of the difference, like Dr. Aaron just said, the difference of being on Dr. Aaron's team or someone else's team 
is Dr. Aaron might have incredible mindset coaching and be able to excel her team where somebody else just doesn't have the background there. They don't have the degrees. They don't have the training. Therefore, that team might not do as good as people being on Dr. Aaron's team. Mm -hmm. So with Marcus said, it levels the playing field for everybody. And when you level the playing field, I get goosebumps when I say that. Mm -hmm. When you level the playing field, it rises everyone up. If you don't have that level playing field, it kind of like is like a teeter totter. You know, leaders come in, leaders go out. It's one of those things that goes up and down. Here, it's like we can take somebody that knows nothing about personal growth, nothing about online marketing, put them in a room for two days with somebody who has made people uh, become zero from earning zero dollars to earning millions of dollars online in a room for two days for a fraction of what I paid and what Dr. Aaron has paid. I paid 10,000 plus for two days of training. And I think he's, they're charging like a hundred bucks. So it's like absolutely nothing. And it makes it where everyone can learn and have that high touch interactive. We did that at uh, one of the events they had last year, and they're going to be doing a lot more of these. And so this company where it's at, you know, we, this will be our first one coming up here and people that are going to be at that one, it will be the smallest one ever. Hmm. And it'll still be around 2000 people, uh, but it'll get to the point where there's 10,000 and 20,000 and 50,000. They are already planning to, to rent out all of Dallas Cowboy stadium. Uh, so all these really cool things about what we have here, you know, having that high tech from Josh, Josh, the high touch from Marcusetta, you know, you can't really pick a better company. And I like Dr. Aaron, like myself, could I go make money anywhere? Probably. I could, there's not one company I could go sign up with and be like, all right, well, I understand their products. I get their compensation plan. Let's go to work. It's going to come down to the culture for me, the technology, the product offering and strategy overall of where is this going to be in a few years from now? Not where it is right now, even though where it is right now is exceptional. I'm already looking where are we going to be at the end of this year? So it's going to be a, real, a lot of fun for anyone that decides to come on board. And like we mentioned, it's free. <laughs> like it's free to just stay around the campfire. Uh, and that's what's cool about it. Is free or free? Or James free. and I, you know, share a mission to raise up leaders. Yeah. You know, this is, this is about changing the trajectory of your family. I mean, of, we can, we can help you make a hundred bucks, 500 bucks a month. We can do that all day long, but we're also, you know, the, the way to duplicate leadership is going to be through these events and through Marcusetta's yeah. training. It, we, we are not here selling hand creams. We are raising up leaders in the affiliate marketing space. And it's just really exciting. Um, I think we did it. I think we did it. I think we should just wrap it up because we could talk all day. Yeah, you um, if you want more information about how to set up an affiliate account for free or be a customer for free, um, Kara at the Higher Life team is going to drop you the link, the highperformancemall.com, the highperformancemall.com. I know I had to go and buy the website, James. You know, I did. It's my favorite pastime buying websites, but take a look around. Um, if you have questions, reach out to myself or James. We are here to answer those questions, but um, we would love to continue the conversation with you. We hope that added massive value to you. Three things, the three secrets to grow a successful online business. Really look at, do they have, do they have the tech to support what you're going to need to be doing online? It, it's no longer, um, it's not a luxury you can't have. Like you, it, it's a requirement, you know, it's, it's, it's not like, well, I could do without, you just really can. Um, the second pillar, you know, really think about your product suite. Are you nimble? Can you move? Do you have something for everyone? Do you have the best of the best? Um, oh, amazing. And then third, who are you surrounding yourself with? And how are you going to get trained up to be a leader in your own life and in your own business and create something that is going to last? So thank you, James. And remember from James, if you don't ask, the answer will always be no. And if you don't, what? Go. You'll go. Never you'll never know. Let's just end with that. Here's two favorite quotes. Thank you, James. Thank you so much for having me. Thanks, thank you so much for everybody hopping on here. Have a wonderful day. We'll see you on the next one. Okay, bye. Bye.